Hey there, it's Katie here from creativehealingphilly.com. We are a teen support center in Flower Town. And if your teen has ever said, I don't know how to be happy, or I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be happy, this quick video is for you. And here's what I want you to know is that our brains are wired for survival and not happiness. I like to bring brain science into what we do here at the Teen Support Center with our groups and our individual clients because when they can make sense of what's going on in their minds, it helps them to cope more um, in more healthy ways and helps them to understand what's going on inside of them. It's not just a theory, it's actually science. So here's the thing, when we as humans first appeared here on the planet, we had one job and that job was to stay alive. This meant that our main priority was looking out for anything that might harm us and avoiding it at all costs. So in those times, that was really helpful for us. But this has evolved today into us avoiding people and places and situations and numbing our feelings and constantly distracting ourselves with our phones and Netflix and anything else in our lives so that we don't have to feel that discomfort or so that we don't have to feel struggle. So what helped us long ago as a species isn't necessarily serving us now. And so that's one of the things that we help our teens with is recognizing something that may have been put in place in your life in the past. You know, maybe it was helpful for you to protect yourself or to isolate or to shut yourself off from people. Those types of things aren't helpful at this point because they might be costing you relationships or feeling close or feeling um, companionship or cared about by other people. So we like to look at it both as a in in terms of our ourselves as humans, but also in your own life and what your start story shows. The other piece of this is that back in those cavemen days, belonging was critical to survival. If you weren't a part of a tribe, if you were left out and alone, this left you vulnerable to getting eaten, attacked, or killed. So it was really important that you constantly be evaluating: Am I good enough to be in this tribe? Am I pulling my I wait? Am I looking like the other people that are around me? Because that was a survival technique. But fast forward this to today, and we're constantly evaluating ourselves as right or wrong or good or bad in an effort to belong. And we here at the Teen Support Center, one of our values is to really help each of our teens learn to shine uniquely for who they are, rather than to try and fit in and make dim their light to make themselves belong with other people. And what's more is social media and everything around us makes it super easy to compare yourself to others and it completely increases our fear of being rejected and not being good enough because there's all these different ways that we can see that we're either not being included or we look different than other people or we have different things than other people. So again, while long ago this brain function kept us safe, in today's world, constantly looking around and feeling inferior makes us feel more alone. So what I want you to hear from all of this is that long ago, we had these, these brain functions that were meant to see the danger around us. And we have these behaviors in place to control that and to keep us safe. But in today's world, that just doesn't serve us anymore. So what we work with teens on is a goal of accepting their emotions and being able to cope with them, okay? Let's dispel the myth that we are always meant to be happy and instead help our teens to gain the tools that they need to manage life's ups and downs. Now, I want you to hear this if you're a parent. This means that you too, as a parent, have a responsibility to be curious about your teen's emotions rather rather than punitive about them. This means that when you see your teen getting tense, when you see your teen getting angry or crying or um, you know, slamming a door, that you don't automatically rush into punishment, but instead get curious about what's behind that behavior. So we always look at behaviors as a means of communicating an emotion. And I want you to start to get curious about what is it that your teen is communicating via their behavior. One of the tools that we use to work on this at the Teen Support Center is the Dialectical Behavior Therapy, DBT skill of observe and describe. And this is when you can help your teen learn to actually become aware of and put words to their emotions rather than trying to eradicate those emotions altogether. So what does this mean? This means bringing an emotion, bringing an awareness to how this emotion feels on the inside. What are the body sensations that come with it? What are the thoughts that we have in our head? What's going through your head when you're feeling this? 
this way right now? How big is this emotion? Can you put a number on it from zero to 10? Does it have a color or a shade? Let's really get in there and, and think about what this feeling is like for you. Let's breathe into it and allow ourselves to ride through it. One of the other tools and skills that we use here at the Teen Support Center is called riding the wave of your emotion. And it's allowing yourself to feel the feeling of the emotion with the understanding that we, we can ride through it, almost like surfing through it, right? We allow it to wash over us and eventually it becomes less intense for us. And this tends to work so much better than trying to push the feeling away, trying to stuff it down in, trying to um, control it or not feel it. So one of my goals for everyone is to be able to feel your feelings. Feeling your feelings is a natural part of being a human being. When we can allow them and accept them and commit to feeling them, this is what having a healthy range of emotions looks like. It's when we repress or ignore or try and get rid of our feelings that it becomes problematic. This is when we start to see self-harm behaviors. This is when we start to see an increase in panic attacks. So I want you to think about if you had a beach ball and you were in a pool and you tried to hold that beach ball underwater, for a while you'd be able to do that, right? It might take some effort on your part to be able to keep that beach ball underwater, but at some point the pressure of it all would cause the beach ball to pop up into the air and out of the water. And that's what happens with our emotions is the more that we try and stuff them down in and control them and don't don't allow ourselves to feel them, the more it becomes like a pressure cooker and they're gonna have to come out in some way and at some point, and then they're not gonna be in your control. So it's much healthier to give ourselves the space and opportunity to allow our feelings to flow and learn the tools to manage them and keep them safe rather than to stuff them down in and then have no control over how they show up for us. So if you have a teen who has been experiencing overwhelming emotions or maybe you're unsure of how to support your teen in navigating the normal ups and downs of being an adolescent, I would invite you to reach out to us. You can go ahead and reach us at creativehealingphilly.com. We'd love to connect with you. We have a variety of groups and individual treatment and also a summer camp that may meet the needs of helping your teen manage the, the ups and downs of life with the intention that it's not about happiness all the time, but having a default of enjoying your life and living your best life and making a life worth living that includes being able to feel a full range of emotions in a healthy way without unhealthy or self-destructive behaviors. Again, I'm Katie from creativehealingphilly.com and thanks for listening today. Have a great day. Bye.